Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start with a story in which our OP was unlucky enough to have the worst boss imaginable, but it was our OP who had the last word. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. You want to know where I am at all times? Your wish is my command. This happened about eight years ago, one year into just my first job, paid internship, clerking gig, I don't know what to call it. The firm that I had worked for had a part-time program for law students so they could work and gain experience while in school, very common in my country. I love my job, I was very grateful for the opportunity to learn and grow and I really enjoyed the work I performed. The thing was I had classes both in the morning and the afternoon, night, and my school was at a very different side of the city, about 8 miles away that could turn into hours of traffic during rush hour in a city with 8 million inhabitants. So my days looked pretty hectic as something like this. 5.30 to 7, get ready and drive to school. 7 to 9, class. 9 to 10-ish, drive to work. 10 to 17, work. 17 to 18, drive to school. 18 to 22, classes. Then I would try to study for one hour after class, and I would often eat while driving. During my first year in the program, I had more than proved myself and earned my place. I was that 19 or 20 year old idiot type A overachiever that knew no boundaries. I had worked weekends, pulled all nighters, literally I would leave school at 10 effing PM and go back to work, worked full time in the summers without more pay, anything I had to do to keep the associates happy so they'd keep teaching me. As I was wrapping my anniversary there, the perfect storm of awful rolled around. On the academic front, I started a new semester and twice a week in the mornings I had a teacher who was awesome but would finish class 20 to 30 minutes late. On the work front, a new partner joined the firm, let's call him Mr. A-Hole, A-H for short, and kind of took over as unofficial managing partner. He was the typical old-fashioned lawyer that should be extinct by now. He could barely use Microsoft Word to type a contract and would pass out at the side of an Excel sheet. He had this weird obsession with punctuality while simultaneously being late to everything. Plus, he moronically believed that by having a bunch of people warming up chairs, he would magically make money. So instead of investing time on client development, he would just spend endless time and effort on bullying everyone around the office. To make matters worse, since other people spoke highly of me, he decided to pay special attention to me. Unsurprisingly, shortly after A-Hole joined the firm, started struggling. Now he could have tried to get new clients, send quotes by the deadline, and show up to meetings on time, but no, of course, the firm was doing poorly because us clerks did not spend enough time warming up the chairs. So he became obsessed with us getting there by 10 a.m., especially me. The issue was that I could not get there by 10 because my teacher finished class late and there was no way I could drive across the city in rush hour in 30 minutes. So A-Hole called a meeting with all the clerks and yelled at me in front of everyone because I was always late, more like two times a week, but whatever. The fact that I would gotten permission from the program committee did not matter. The fact that I was working six or seven hours every day while I only had to work five did not matter. The fact that I would work weekends and late nights did not matter. I tried to explain, but he kept yelling at me and would not let me talk. Having had enough, I left the conference room straight into the office of every member of the clerk program committee, one junior associate, one senior associate, and one partner, to say the same speech. I'm late because I have class. I've proven my commitment to the firm, but my education is important too. If 30 minutes late twice a week is too big of an issue, feel free to fire me, but I'm not leaving class early. Then went to my desk to do my work. I guess the committee informed other partners and word got around of what was going on, small firm, because as I was getting ready to leave for school, A-Hole came fuming to my desk and told me, I know you're lying, from now on I want to know where you are at all times, and if I catch that you are slacking off or lying, you're fired and I'll make sure no one will ever hire you. So cue malicious compliance. The next day I woke up extra early, 5am sharp, took a time-stamped photo and sent it to both his email and phone since I could not risk him not getting it and him not knowing where I was. I sent a timestamp photo every five minutes captioning what I was doing like it was my own personal social media platform of one follower. 
The cherry on top was that my teacher had worked with AO in the past and obviously did not like him very much, so he let me take photos during the class and diligently send them to A-hole. I even went as far as taking a photo of the toilet door with the text peeing and then at the toilet flushing. All done. While driving, since traffic was really slow, I would send a photo and include how much I'd moved during that time. Sometimes it was something absurd, like 100 feet. As soon as I sent a photo of me at my desk, he shows up saying that he got the point and I could stop. A couple weeks later, he simply stopped bugging people and started working from home or locking himself up in his office. My guess is I was not the only one to complain, and the other partner realized how dangerous it could be for the firm and asked him to back off. Why did the law clerk start a photography business? Because they were already great at capturing every moment for their boss, down to the last flush. This is a great example of malicious compliance, thanks to OP. And our second story. Lady, I don't really care if you want to order. Get your hands off me. I have a story I bet you guys would love from before the times of COVID. Cast, me, Karen, and Cool Uncle. So a bit of backstory. This happened about two years back when I was still in high school. It was summer break and a few friends, my uncle and I, went out for ice cream at one of our local shops to celebrate me receiving an invite to a very prestigious military school here in the States that I'll just refer to as WP. Since it was summer, there was a pretty long line at this tiny place, and they only had outdoor seating. Being that we were a pretty big group, I had my friends go save us a table, and I made a list on my phone with my friends and my uncle's orders, so only one of us had to wait in line. As I turned to head into the line, I heard it. You know that noise someone makes when they think they're high and mighty? That condescending clearing of the throat? Now, mind you, I'm pretty weirdly built for a female. I'm pretty short, like under five feet, but I'm bulky from being a wrestler and doing weightlifting. At the time, I think I just had some standard jean shorts and a random shirt with my school's logo on it. Nothing that would have made me seem like an employee at the shop. Not that the actual workers ever would have come outside to take orders or anything. At first, I kind of tried to ignore the lady and kept heading towards the line, but she made her throat clearing noise again and being me, I decided to see what she wanted. Now, I really didn't want to say anything to some random lady, so I just sort of made eye contact and raised my eyebrow at her. She had that pretty stereotypical Karen look, mid-30s with that short-cut, fake blonde hair and tacky acrylic nails. When she realized I acknowledged her, she huffed before talking to me. Karen, well, it took you long enough. I want to order. Like, I sort of knew this bee was going to be loud and really irritating, but I wanted to keep my cool and just explain the situation. Me. Miss, I don't work here. I'm just grabbing what me and my group want so we don't have to stand in. Karen, I don't care if you want to help your friends first. I watched you write down their order. You work here and now you will help me as well. Okay, so clearly I was dealing with a crazy lady. Great. Me. Miss, I just told you I don't work here. I'm just doing my group's order. After that, I turned to walk away. Turns out that apparently, like most Karens, sudden movement upsets them. As I turn, I felt those fake acrylics press into my wrist. This bee actually decided to grab me. I quickly ripped my arm from her grip as I turn around to face her. The mere fact that she had the audacity to grab me, even if I was an employee, there's no reason to place your hands on someone. Me. Look, lady, even if I worked here, which I don't, you have absolutely no reason to ever lay your effing hands on me. Through this shouting, my uncle grabbed the manager to come help me out. They came out just to see me wrench my wrist from this Karen's grasp. Cool uncle, what the hell are you doing to my niece? He grabbed my arm to check over my wrist. I knew I was bleeding a bit from when she dug her nails in, but I didn't really notice it too much. The manager was trying to ask the Karen about what happened as Karen rants about how I was rude, didn't want to take her order, and how I assaulted her. Now, obviously, she didn't have any marks on her while I was the one with nail marks on my wrist. The manager calmly explained that I didn't work there, nor did the workers come around to take orders. My uncle told the manager while I was okay, the lady needed to go. Needless to say, I got my ice cream and had a pretty nice time after that. Sometimes, despite best efforts, conflicts arise. The story shows that while not all conflicts can be prevented, they can be managed effectively. You should try especially hard when your opponent's crazy Karen. And our last story. Entitled mom fights someone in a wheelchair for an elevator. 
So I, 23-year-old female, was born with a birth defect that caused me to be paralyzed from the waist down, so I've been in a wheelchair basically my whole life. This happened around January, back when I was living in Oregon. It was like 1 a.m. and I was getting ready to go out. I had to get on a plane trip to Toronto later. My older brother, 26-year-old male, able-bodied, was waiting for me there, and I was kind of in a rush. I lived in a third-story apartment and had to use the elevator to get down. I was going to the elevator to get down, and then the entitled mom comes in. EM tries to block the elevator because she wants her kid to use it, but her kid's able-bodied and could just use the stairs, but EM wants her to use the elevator because it's faster. We sat there arguing while her kid tried to persuade EM to back off because they could just use the stairs. Then EM decides to just slap me across the face. She then yells because I'm hogging the elevator and that she really needed to use it more than I did. I managed to get in, but EM decides to squeeze her and the kid, who looked so done with her, into the lift. The whole time we were going down, EM was complaining that mothers have it harder than the disabled, and meanwhile, I'm just cramped and tired. I decided to just not say anything because her kid went off on her. When we got to the bottom floor, EM pushed in front of me to get out, and I was trying hard just to ignore her. My brother had been waiting for me down there the whole time and immediately saw the slap mark. He walks up to me and asks what happened. EM heard this and began to rant about how I was a bratty teenager and then decided to make up a lie about her child having autism. My brother's having none of her crap and rightfully tells about how she was ableist and a bad person. After that, I got in his car and left. One of my friends who still lives there told me in March about how EM got evicted for threatening to kill a neighbor's dog. Still think about EM whenever I think about my time living alone. So rude, all for not wanting to use the stairs. I feel bad for her kid, to be honest. Update. She also got arrested for the dog threat. Well done for the police. F her. You can see from this woman that she is completely normal because every woman runs around with her child at one in the morning. Should have called the police and pressed charges against her. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.